I'm sort of have this game that we started playing when I do presentations, and it's called Where's Chexy? So C-H-E-X-E-E -E is my Twitter name, um, and I do a lot of conferences where I have to stand behind podiums, and I'm quite small. So there are many pictures of me, which I'm not actually in, because they look kind of like this. <laughs> um, so the challenge is, while I'm doing this, to catch me behind the podium sometime, showing maybe like less than 5 to 10% of my actual person, and post them on Twitter <laughs> with a tag WCLV, just to see how funny we can get them. But um, there are quite a few from other conferences, so challenge for the next half hour or so. Um, so I'm presenting on WordPress No Does, so it's all the things we wish we knew when we started using WordPress. So real quick, how many of you had been using WordPress for over six months? So about 60% of the room, maybe more than that? Okay. So at the end of this, I'm going to ask you how many of you learned something new to see maybe how that compared up. So, Because um, I find that even developers who have been maybe using it for a while don't know a lot, a lot about the front-end features. There are a couple power-using features that like nobody really knows about, but they're really awesome. They make your life way easier. And I love that about WordCamps, because you just find that one thing that makes your whole life easier when you're developing, when you're using, when you're blogging, whatever. So that's what I'm going to try to do for you today. Um, so we're going to go for, I'm not going to go over installation with you, but I'm going to come up with a few tips that I use while, um, while I'm installing WordPress for the first time to make sure that it's organized, partly to make sure it's secure. There are some miss there, but we'll go over them. Um, so the first thing is when you're installing WordPress, the, the fav, famous five minute install, you get this screen. Um, and the two things that I change on this screen generally are um, your table prefix. Um, so even though there are some, there is some truth to this making it more secure, um, that when, when people try to target your WP database, they know not to do, they know to target WP. But if you have access to your database, um, they have access to all your tables anyway. Um, so they know, they already know what your prefix is. But I like to use this as an organizational thing. So if you ever want to have more than one WordPress install on, um, on the same, table or on the same database, you can change the prefixes up um, and run them all on the same database. Um, it depends on how big your blogs are, but it might get heavy if you have two really big blogs running on the same database, but it's definitely an option. And let's see, the next one is I change the default username. So this defaults to admin, and in previous versions of WordPress, you could only use admin as your administrator username, but now when you do the install, you can change it. So I usually change it to something admin or to some sort of unique administrator username that you're going to remember um, so that if people are trying to maybe do the most simplistic hack and guess your admin password, um, they won't know. They'll have the additional challenge of guessing your username, which isn't really hacking, but whatever. <laughs> and then the next thing that people try to do when they first set up their blogs is get rid of those ugly permalinks that's like question mark P equals 472. And rather than that, you want SEO-friendly permalinks. You want permalinks that have dashes and that have whole words and your post title in them so that search engines can pick them up and gather the words that are important to your website. Um, so the first thing you have to do is go into your permalink settings, which is under um, in the WordPress menu under settings. And you want to check, rather than default, you can check any one of these depending on what structure you want or you can set your own custom structure. So a lot of people do instead of, I usually do um, year, then month, and post name. So it'll have the number of the year, then slash the number of the month, and then your post title in the URL. Um, a lot of people do slash category. So if you have a blog that writes about like cats and dogs, you do dogs slash like Dobermans that are awesome or some crap like that. So. Um, you want to pick what would be most SEO friendly to you, so what would help you find the posts fastest if you want to remember URLs, and what would have the most keywords for your content. The next thing to setting up permalinks is whether your server correctly sort of recognizes that you want to, to rewrite these permalinks without, um, through WordPress. And for these first three things, um, Usually, by default, your server, depending on what kind of hosting you have, 
they're not a problem or for the first two things. Um, for the next two things, these are the things that I have clients run into the most when they do their first WordPress install and they try to use pretty permalinks. So if you don't have an HT access file in your WordPress directory, they just won't work. When you try to click on pages, they'll go to pretty permalinks, but they won't exist or they won't, they won't render. So um, you need to have an HT access file in your root directory of WordPress. So wherever you installed WordPress, there should be a file called .htaccess. Um, and it, in order for WordPress to sort of set up pretty permalinks automatically, it must be writable by WordPress. So you have to ch go in and change the permissions and make sure WordPress can say, we want pretty permalinks, we need to edit this htaccess file and allow for pretty permalinks. Um, there's an alternative to giving WordPress permission to your HD access file. Um, you can go in yourself and add this code to your HD access file because this is essentially what WordPress is doing, oh, but behind HD the scenes. Yeah. So it's basically a file that's just called .ht access in your WordPress root. So when WordPress enables pretty permalinks, it's adding this bit of code to your um, to your HT access file, and you can copy and paste this from this codex page. So if you want to go to that URL. Um, you don't have to like memorize this code or anything, but you can go in yourself and create or edit your HT access file and just add this rather than giving your WordPress install permissions. Um, if you choose to give your WordPress install permissions to write to your HT access file, you, once you're done with it, you need to, need to, need to set permissions back to strict so that if somebody else can, can access your HT access file, it could be a big problem. <laughs> Um, and then from here on out, that was kind of the most technical part of this. It's going to be a lot of how to use the back end of WordPress, little tips for what WordPress features there are in the UI. Um, the first one I'm going to go over is navigating um, the WordPress back end. And a lot of people don't know this, but you can get to every page in the WordPress back end with one click. Um, so if you, I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Let's see. This one. Oh. Here we go. So here's your menu. And a lot of people I see do this. They say, well, I want to write a post, so I'm going to go to posts, and then I'm going to go to add new post. But what you can do instead is there's these little arrows right here. I don't know if you can see them in the corner. So let's do where is it? right here, and where your mouse turns into a, uh, a little arrow. And if you collapse that, um, it'll collapse your WordPress menu, and when you hover over the icons, it'll actually show a flyout menu um, so that... So I'm on Add New Post, and I want to get to Add a New Page in one click. I can go to Pages, Add New, and I'm already there. So um, in the WordPress Nav menu, um, there are only two levels for any given menu. So if you have one flyout menu, you can get to any page in the back end with one, unless... This doesn't account for plugins that might have multiple pages, but for the default WordPress functions and settings, you can get to any page in the back end with one click. Let's see. You can also get to every page in one page load. So let's say you don't want to necessarily use this flyout menu. The icons are sort of nondescript. You want to make sure you have the text so it's easier for you to navigate. But you also like the convenience of not having to reload the page to get to pages and then add new. Every time you hover over your nav menu, there's a little arrow over here. So usually when you click on it, it expands when you get to that page. But you can expand any of these out at any given time without reloading the page. So if you go to media and you want to add new, you didn't have to reload the page. You just sort of drop everything down in an accordion format. And then the WordPress backend is actually really flexible with how you can make it look or how you can make it look for your clients, which can sometimes be really important because there are a lot of features when you're using WordPress as a CMS that clients don't need. So for a lot of websites that I build for clients, they don't have a blog. They just want a website. Um, so maybe they don't need to use certain, certain things on the pages website or certain things on the, um, on the post page. So what we can do is there are two things um, that WordPress has built in to customize the UI. And the first one is in this little screen options um, button. So at the top of almost every screen in the WordPress dashboard, um, 
there's a screen options button. And when you click on it, it'll give you options for what you want to see on that screen, what you want to take away, what options you want to see. Um, so when you're viewing all your posts, um, let's say if you're on a netbook and you have a really small resolution, let's say you only have like this much screen space, but you want to see, you don't want like this date to the date over here to sort of roll over and make your post really long so you have to scroll a lot. What you can do is on the screen options, you can uncheck date and it'll start removing things from the columns. And so if you have, say you have a client who only wants to see authors and categories, then that's all they have to see. Um, and I think when you're working with clients and they have specific things that they need to see, the less you have, um, sorry, the less you have there, the better. All right. And so what's also useful, and I, I find this more useful on the pages, the list pages page, is when you go to screen options, there's also this, this sort of show on screen 20 pages button. And that's saying for every, for every like, list of pages in order um, to paginate, I want to see 20 items. So if you have like, let's say you have 100 pages and you're trying, you're trying to find a specific page under a specific parent and put it in, a, in an order, and you can only see 20 pages per screen, you're sort of going to get confused and you're going to have to look for it, you're going to have to go through the pages. But if you want all your pages to be viewed on one screen, um, you can put this number, I usually put it to really high, so unless you have sort of slow internet and it affects your loading times, you can put this number as high as you want so that you can see everything on one screen. And you can do the same thing on the posts page, so this currently shows 20 posts at a time, and then it paginates. So if I change this to, let's say, five, I don't want to see very many, then it only shows five, and it paginates. So if I want to see them all again, I can put 100. It shows everything. So, and a lot of people don't know that you can customize the way that people use WordPress. You don't have to go to the default um, look or the default functionality in the back end, and you don't have to you don't have to go into the code to change a lot of the sort of simple stuff with how you view WordPress. Um, and another kind of awesome thing, let's see if we go to the dashboard. Um, almost, oops, that's not the dashboard. Almost every um, sort of box in the WordPress um, dashboard is draggable. So if you want, so you don't want quick press, you want to take it away, you want it to be down here. or if you want to take it away completely, go to your screen options, you just take it out and it's not there anymore. If you want to move this up or dr drop it down, you can customize this on, and with the dashboard it's sort of just um, cosmetic, so it's like I want a couple columns, I, want, I just want one column, because I have a small screen, and if I have a small screen then I only need one column and two columns, it gets kind of messy. Where this really, really helps is your add new posts or add new pages um, functions. So if you have a client who really doesn't need things like trackbacks or custom fields, you can take those out and simplify what they see so it's less confusing for them to, to find what they need or it's more intuitive for them to edit posts. And I find a lot of my clients, a lot of clients that are sort of older, more old school, have small, <laughs> they have small screen resolutions. So um, the two column view sort of messes up their view of things. So one column view works really well for clients who sort of need that space. Or if you have a netbook or if you're editing on something small, um, they can customize it. And it actually, if you edit this sort of post page um, screen and as a user, when you log in, it'll come up the same every time. So if you have different users that sort of have different settings with where they place things, it'll save them. And if they log in with one person, might be looking at a different, something that looks different than this, where the other person has a screen customized to how they want it. And a lot of the times when I have clients, I'll go in and assess what they need and customize the right screen so that they only see what they need to, and it's very much less confusing. So there's a screen. And when you're editing posts, there's a lot of um, things sort of built into TinyMCE, which is the editor that you use to edit posts in WordPress, and that sort of tie into WordPress um, that a lot of people don't know about, oddly. <laughs> so one of the ones I'm going to go over is all your options for editing images. 
Um, when you add a new post, and as most of you know, and you want to add a new image, you just hit this button. And then you select your file. I already have something uploaded, so I'm going to go to Media Library. And let's select this. And I find a lot of people don't use this function a lot, but that you can, when you upload an image, you're not tied to it. So you can edit this image. So if you hit the Edit Image button, you have options to crop, to flip, to do a horizontal. And I see a lot of people doing these in Photoshop before they bring them into WordPress, which is very timely. <laughs> so you have to open up Photoshop, wait for it to launch, sort of do all these things um, to get their images the right size. But you really don't have to do that. Um, so if you want to crop your image, sort of just drag over it. You can crop it where you want. Save, crop, crop, and you save it. And now that's your new image. So you, you don't necessarily have to do all these things before bringing them into WordPress. A lot of times WordPress can do these things for you. So if you have clients that don't have Photoshop or aren't very good with photo editing software, um, this can be really, really helpful for them, especially. I know a lot of people use um, custom post types for, like, say, sliders. Um, so when you have a slider on your home page with images, um, and clients, they have to have that slider be a specific size, image size. Um, they can use this to make sure that it's pretty close and that they're not cropping anything that they don't want to crop. Sorry, what's the name of that again? Um, name of? It's in WordPress? Yeah, it's built into WordPress. So everything I'm talking about today is built into WordPress. There are no plugins. Um, so you get, when you upload an image, here, I'll close it out and show you again. So when you upload an image, you go to one of these icons and you upload your image. I already have mine uploaded, so I'm just going to go to my media library. And you see details, and there's just a button that says Edit Image. And you hit it, and it'll bring up. You can flip it. And if you use, um, if you use post thumbnails, actually, you can um, only edit the thumbnail. So let's say like this thumbnail is like focused on my head, and I don't really like that. So <laughs> I'm going to crop it to Collins over here so I'm not in the thumbnail. And I just hit thumbnail. And then I'm going to save that. Oh, I didn't hit crop, sorry. Wait a minute, I messed it up, OK. So I'm going to do that and then hit crop so it actually crops it. And then hit thumbnail. <laughs> and then save it so that the thumbnail is no longer a picture of me. It's a picture of Colin. But the full size image is still the entire photo. So if you find that your thumbnails, when you upload, your thumbnails will auto crop. And if you find that it's sort of crooked or it cuts things out that you don't want, you can go in and, and make sure it's exact. Do you have a question? Yes, you can. So um, you can't necessarily just compress the file, but you can scale the image down so that the file is smaller. So I just sort of cropped this so it just grabbed like the pixels. So it's still like 4,000 pixels wide. So if I want to scale that instead, I can scale it to maybe like 800, which is more web friendly. And it'll make sure it doesn't stretch it. And then you hit scale. And then your actual image is, is smaller by the pixel. So. And if you ever mess it up, you can just restore the original. And that's the first one that we were working with. So it actually does preserve your original image file so that if you mess it up in the WordPress editor, you can always go back. And another thing that you saw there was that whenever you upload an image, WordPress creates different sizes for that image. So it creates a thumbnail, creates a medium size, it creates a large size, and then it keeps your full size image. Um, when you, you can actually change what sizes those are. So if you use post thumbnails, and the default post thumbnail size is 150 pixels by 150 pixels, but you want it to be, let's say, 500 by, that's too big, like 100 by 100 pixels. You want them to be smaller. But if you resize them only using CSS, they'll, they sort of won't look good in Internet Explorer. And that's not really the correct way to do it. So you can actually do this in WordPress. Um, if you go to your settings, under Settings, and go to Media, you can actually change the sizes for that WordPress creates when you upload a photo. So if you think the large size should be larger than 1024 by 1024 <laughs> maximum, you can change that. If you think the thumbnail size should be 100 by 100, you can change that. Um, I would actually keep the large size. Um, it's a pretty good size. Um, 1024 by 1024. Oh, right here. 
So here's the large size, and here's the medium size, and then the thumbnail size. And are you going to get into video too? Um, I'm actually not going to get into video in this session. Um, I think the guy who's doing the podcasting is going to get more into video. Um, um, I'm going to go into how you can embed videos um, from YouTube, but I'm not going to go into like uploading your own video and hosting them on WordPress. Yeah, so I'm going to show you sort of the built-in WordPress ways to embed YouTube videos or any other sort of videos. Cool. And another feature that I find a lot of people don't know about is that if you have a lot of categories and a lot of tags, but you want to convert them to each other, so let's say you were writing a golf blog and you started writing about, I don't know anything about golf, I don't know why I said that, you started writing about golf bags and using it as a tag because you didn't have very many posts about that. You start writing about it more and more, so you want to turn it into a category because that would make more sense as you write more and more about that. So, um, or let's say you messed up something and you just wanted a category to be a tag instead. Um, actually, I'm just going to show the slides. If you go to your import settings, so it's under tools, and then import in WordPress. Um, there's, a, there's an item here called the Categories and Tags Converter right there. And if you click on it, it'll prompt you to install a plugin. It's pretty smooth. So it'll install the plugin for you and then take you right to it. And this is what it looks like. So it'll list all your categories and you just check the ones you want to convert into tags. Or if you click the button at the top that says tags to categories instead, it'll list all your tags and you can click the ones you want to convert into categories. So it actually makes organization very flexible um, in case you mess anything up or just want to reorganize your blog because you don't like the way your tags and categories are working. Um, and I actually <laughs> just learned what press this does not too long ago because I never actually use it. Um, it's actually pretty useful. So press this is a bookmarklet that goes into your browser. And I'm actually going to do it live right here. So if you, go into, um, if you go into Tools in your menu, so it's actually down here at the bottom. I like having everything expanded. So, so Tools is down here. If you click on Tools, um, there's a little press this link. And what you actually do is you grab this and add it to your bookmarks. So I would just grab the link and drag it, because I'm using Chrome, you can drag it to your bookmark bar. Pretty sure that works in Safari and Firefox as well. Um, and then if you're serving, the, you're serving the web and you find a really cool article that you want to reblog or you want to blog about, and you wanna or you just want to save in WordPress, um, it's like I found this article on io9 that I thought was pretty awesome. So as you're surfing, you can use this bookmark. And you, if you just click it, it'll automatically bring the link into WordPress and draft up a post for you. And so from there, you can write more about it, or um, you can basically reblog any links or anything you find online um, using the Press This bookmarklet. And you can actually use, you can have multiple bookmarks in your bookmark bar for multiple blogs. So every, every Press This um, bookmarklet that you drag into your browser is unique to the blog that you dragged it from. Does that make sense? Yes. So yeah. you have to, uh, just uh, for on a PC, you just drag the Press This um, your bookmark bar, so you have to make sure your bookmark oh, bar is visible. I yeah, okay. I think if you you can right click it and add it to bookmarks um, as well. I think so. And so if that's all I wanted to do, I would just publish this, and it would just publish a link to my blog with a link um, to that. But usually you'd write more. You probably just don't want to post links. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I, I actually didn't know what what that was, or what I knew what it was, but I didn't know what, exactly what it did until I went to another WordCamp. And I think that's really important to just little things that you didn't know that are kind of cool. Um, so the next thing is video embeds, and I find a lot of people using plugins to embed videos from YouTube and from Daily Motion and things like that when this functionality is actually built into WordPress without having to, or a lot of people grabbing the embed code from YouTube and pasting it into your WordPress editor and then having it screw up your code because it doesn't accept it. Um, so you can actually do this in WordPress with no plugins. Um, and the first thing you want to do is, according to what your blog looks like and your theme, you can set, um, you can set how big the videos show up. 
um, when you embed them. So the default size would be, I usually just set a default like width. So maybe, maybe my blog is like 500 pixels wide, the space. So I would set a default width to 500. And so it'll automatically size your video so that they're proportional and that they don't exceed whatever width or height um, you set there. And you also want to make sure that um, this box is checked. And what that'll I'll actually show what that'll do in a minute. But it says to attempt to automatically embed all plain text URLs. And these settings are under media or under settings and then media in your WordPress navigation menu. So if you ever want to sort of change, if you change the video sizes here, it'll change all across your blog. So let's say you had like five videos embedded on different posts and you change the max width from 500 to 600, it would change all of them. And so if we want to actually do this, so let's say um, I had that box checked that said automatically embed plain text URLs. Um, so the easiest way to embed videos just using default WordPress functionality is you can just grab the YouTube URL or the Dailymotion URL or the Vimeo URL. There's a list of, of sites that they uh, support, and it's all the mainstream ones. And you would just add, copy and paste the URL. So I found this really cool video. And I just grab this and put it here. And you want to make sure that it's on its own line, like if I had this wouldn't work because it's on a line with another piece of text. So you want to make sure that it has its own line. And then you would save that. Let's publish that, actually. And then if you view it, it automatically embeds the video. So you have that right there just by pasting in the URL, not by grabbing the embed code or using any sort of short code. And then the alternative, oh, I'm sorry. The, like the YouTube player? No. It just uses sort of default settings. Okay. So if you, wanted, if you wanted to customize your YouTube player, like take away the titles or those things that are in YouTube, um, you might have to use a plugin for that. So those more specific things. Um, yep, so audio embed. And then you can also use the built-in WordPress embed short code. So instead of just um, putting in the YouTube URL, you would put these tags. Oops, I forgot the backslash. Oh, no. You put a slash right there. OK. So you put it in between these two tags to make sure that your video, um, and if your video shows up. So if, if there's some sort of bug where I've had this happen before, there's a bug where, where just putting the URL wasn't working for some reason. I couldn't figure out why. Um, I just put it in between the embed tags, and it automatically works. So and a lot of people use um, plugins for this because they think there's no default shortcode, but there actually is, and it's pretty simple. And this is also where you can, since the width you set in the settings is global, so all your videos will be that size, you can use this tag to set a custom width. So if I went back to this video that I embedded, but I wanted it to be really small for some odd reason. I want it to be like 100 width, 100 pixels. Then I would add those embed tags, but I would add something that says width equals 100 there um, into the first embed tag. Does that make sense to everybody? Has everybody sort of familiar with HTML or do I need to explain that further? Okay. And so if you update that the preview, it shows it super tiny because that's what I told it to do. Or you can vary the sizes depending on the video that you want to show. And those are basically all the all the tricks that I could think of <laughs> um, that I use or that I've discovered that I found were useful that I didn't know about. So how many of you guys um, learned something, who raised your hand before, said you've been using WordPress for over six months, learned something new about it today? Oh, good. Yay. OK. <laughs> I was worried that I was going to do that, and like two people would raise their hand. I'd be like, well. <laughs> OK. Um, any questions? On the media settings, No, it doesn't. So if you, so you're saying if you use like an image tag grabbed from a not WordPress, or just so any image like tag. Say, you know, grab like the, you know, right click on an image, and say grab the URL. Or no, it doesn't. It, 
because it actually um, will set the width um, as like a variable inside WordPress so that it'll set it globally, but if you have a manual piece of code, it won't touch that. It's like I upload my images to CloudFront. Yeah, that would be that. What you could do if you wanted to is upload it to WordPress and then size it there, or just yeah. take it into Photoshop would probably be the or another image editing. Yeah, I was just wondering so that since it's right it's now. not in WordPress isn't in c control of that content, it won't really do that. You can set that in the CSS, but it's still going to try to load up the whole image. Yeah. So that's that's also a problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? Cool. Is there any? Oh, right there. Permalinks. Okay. Um, did you want to see more like the HT access stuff or? Okay. So this part's pretty easy. You just sort of check that box, and it'll turn it on. And for a lot of servers, this will actually work, like just doing this. Um, it'll auto WordPress will have automatic access to AG access, and we'll be able to do that. But for some servers, you won't. It depends on what service you're using and how their permissions work. And I've seen it just across the board on several sites that I've worked on. Some of them work, some of them don't. It's really spastic. So um, these first two things are usually things that servers have on by default. So um, I usually wouldn't worry about them. I would only worry about them if you do this HT access, all the HT access things, and it's still not working. Um, but in order to change that, you probably have to call your host and talk to them directly, unless you're hosting yourself and you're like totally in control of your server. Um, first thing, and with the HT access file, it's just a file in your WordPress root named .ht access. And in some um, FTP programs, it wouldn't show up. So you have to make sure that if there's a view hidden file settings, that that would show up. Because any files that have a dot in front of it are generally hidden files to, H to FTP programs. So if you don't see it, but you can't create one because it says there's already one there, um, that's probably your problem. Um, and then you have to make sure, if you want WordPress to to enable pretty permalinks automatically, you have to ensure that the HT access is writable. So you have to edit the permissions, and usually that's a, that's a chmod. So you would, in most FTP programs, you can right click on the file and edit the permissions, or it'll say chmod um, this file, and make sure that it's writable, um, writable by WordPress, and it'll have checkboxes that show what's writable and what's not. Um, so, but if you want to go the route, which I, which is probably slightly more secure rather than changing the permissions on your HD access file. Because if you don't change them back, it could cause problems with people being able to get into your system. Um, this code is up on the WordPress codex. And so when you create that HD access file, um, you just paste this code into it. And that's pretty much it. And per pretty permalink should work. And if at that point they don't work, um, and you've done all the things you've you set them in the WordPress settings, you've edited your HT access file, you've made sure the code is right. Um, you may have to call your server to make sure there aren't any, um, any like that sim links aren't turned off or something like that. Is that clear or is it kind of fuzzy? Okay. Um, and then if there aren't any more questions, I was wondering if anybody else had something I didn't talk about that they found out that was really cool or like a tip that, that is useful. Yeah. yeah uh, my name is Eric Myers. Um, I'd like to add on top of something that. Um, Chelsea. Chelsea. You can just call me Chelsea if you don't want to use um, my name. I like to add something that Chelsea said. Uh, there's a really good plugin out there called WP um, Supercatch. And uh, it really, um, it's a really good plugin. And it, what it does is I use it on all my blogs. Even if it gets 10 views, 15 views, I recommend this plugin for everybody that uses WordPress because it basically creates, when you load your site new, if you get more people and more people, if you get big traffic, traffic spike is really important for it, um, just because of it will create HTML for, for files of your database and everything. So when you get a big traffic spike, um, it, it's not going to put more load on your server. But I recommend it in any site you can use that plugin. So what he said is there's a plugin called WP Supercache um, that will actually, basically if you get hit with a big traffic spike, if you get or if you get a story somewhere where it gets a lot of exposure and you maybe you're on a shared server where you don't have a lot of processing power so it can essentially take down your site if you're on a shared server it can take down a lot of other people's sites too so yeah so what it does is rather than making WordPress every time somebody loads up a page 
grab the post information and put that load on the database and on the server, it'll just create a static HTML file and serve that up instead, instead of reprocessing that. Um, and there are actually a lot, of, a lot of different plugins that do different things for optimizing and um, for scalability, basically, making sure that your site doesn't get taken down because you get too much traffic. Um, I'm not the expert on that, but there's back cache, there's memcache, there's stuff that you can do to mess around with your server. And the expert on that is actually here. I don't think he's in here, but if you see Joseph Scott later, he knows a lot about that. So. Either way, if you're, if you're a newbie, um, it's a great plugin that you create yeah. for, for... Some of the other plugins are more advanced and you have to do things yeah. on your server to make them work. If you don't know anything about WordPress, you just need to start with just one plugin and it's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since we have a little extra time, do you, which um, plugin do you use? Do you use all in one SEO or do you use Headspace? I actually don't, don't use those because I like generally, um, I'm a theme developer so, and a designer, so generally I, I don't do the SEO stuff. Um, I'm not, I'm not a very good like, expert with SEO. So for clients, if I'm doing a freelance client, I usually um, have them use all-in-one SEO because that's sort of the go-to one that I know of. Um, but I don't, I don't want to like, tell you which one's better because I'm not like. Okay, maybe I, I can ask that question. Like, um, <laughs> Um, well, I have most of my clients, actually, my freelance clients are, um, they're actually SEO people, so, um, who, who asked me to design for them. So I'll, I'll install that plugin and explain the settings to them and then have them decide. Because I'm not, I honestly don't have the best sort of knowledge of what's good for SEO and what's not, so I try not to. Actually, I'll just on that for you. Um, I, use head, I use Headspace too, and uh, it's really taken over um, all in one SEO package. I just started using it a few weeks ago when I found out about it through some research for a, a, a session at Pop Camp and I, it's a really good plugin if you, if you don't know anything about SEO and find SEO, all in one SEO tag card, or just a little bit too advanced. Um, again, it, the plugin is called uh, Headspace 2, and it really does make WordPress SEO very simple. Cool. Okay, so the, I, again, I have another question in addition to that, because recently, like you showed with the videos, um, say you're creating your own videos. It's, I know it's best to host your own videos on your server. Um, I'm using Amazon. I know I'm going off on a tangent. I'm sorry. Oh, I would just, I wouldn't necessarily recommend hosting your own videos on your server. Um, it tends to be very expensive right. and, uh, and take up a lot of resources. So that's why you would go with Amazon S3 or, mm -hmm. or, or another cloud but service. The whole point I'm trying to get to is video site maps. And I'll show, I should have just went to that to begin with, the video site maps. How would you, is there a plugin you would recommend for that? I'm not sure what you mean by video sitemaps, actually. Um, you like want to site map up your whole website? Or? OK, so you know how you would use XML, uh, Google, Google XML? Oh, to get an index uh, better XML. into Google? So I heard somewhere, and I believe it was from the WordPress chip, where she was talking about doing video sitemaps for her actual videos. So they got, they were more search engine friendly. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I just Google has a uh, Google has a plugin called Google XML Sitemap for videos. Um, oh, cool. I've truthfully never heard of this, but anything yeah. from Google is usually fairly. Good. They're the ones who are sort of in charge of that, so I would trust that. Um, and Google SEO sitemaps or XML sitemaps is pretty standard for most WordPress installs to make sure that your site is getting indexed correctly. Any other questions or tips for anybody else? Oh, over here. I, it's not as much a problem as it used to be, but when I, I want to write, let's say, 10 posts, but I want them to be delivered in order. I don't want them, you know what I mean? Like, it always puts the last one first, and I want to It'll post the most recent one first in your, um, in your blog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can schedule posts to be to be posted in the future. 
So what you would, alternatively, you can post them backwards if, if you wanted to. Um, so if a new person comes on the side, it's going to start with number one. And yeah. In a, a week later, someone starts. Start what you can do if you want, if you have one specific post or a couple specific posts that you want to show up at the top, you can use a sti the sticky post function. So I can, I can show you that, actually. Um, and as long as you're not using a messed up theme, this should work. <laughs> uh, so, and all the themes that are approved by WordPress tend to use this. So, um, there is a, let's see, where is it? I think I might have hit it earlier. On the list page? I'm pretty sure it was on. And we're seeing it on the edit page. Now I'm confused. Yeah. So I remember it being down here. I might have it disabled, actually. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, make this post sticky. So. I think I might have actually hit it earlier because <laughs> it is in the edit posting. But if you go to quick edit and you hit mo make this post sticky, and there should be a box for it in your actual edit, pa edit yeah, post page too. I think I just hit it while I was messing around with stuff earlier. But And then you hit update. Um, it will, whatever posts you specify as sticky, will, it should show up at the top. It's actually not showing up. Oh. But yeah, so this post is sticky. So it shows up at the top. So if you have sticky posts, they will show up at the top. But if you have more than one, um, it'll only show one, actually. So what exactly is It's a post that shows up at the top. It's sticky. It sticks there. Well, that, that's the language, so. Yeah, sort of. So, And a lot of themes will, will style it differently. So like in 2010, it has a nice box to show that this is featured. It's not just at the top. It's different. Um, I work for Lively Labs. It's actually on my last slide. Let's see. I work for Lively Labs in Reno. Um, I work with Colin over there who did a pretty good webhooks presentation. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a web designer. So.